This is a refurbished gaming laptop from Backmarket. And this is... These are gaming laptops. They are powerful, blazing fast machines you can play all the latest games on. But if there's one thing that they all have in common, it's that they are not cheap. Gaming stuff is super expensive. So today I'm going to buy a refurbished gaming laptop. Hopefully it'll get us some of that extra gaming performance, but save on some of that extra gaming money. Still, to do this properly, I'm going to buy a brand new laptop at the same price for comparison. So we'll be able to see what you're gaining and losing by going refurbed. My, My poor, poor, poor wallet. 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 Refurbished first, I'm going to buy from Backmarket, who are a website which is a marketplace for refurbished phones and other tech, including, well, gaming computers. Here's the website, gaming PCs. We'll start with the cheapest available and see if there's anything worth getting. This one, 389, that's about right. This laptop which caught my eye is an Asus Tough. FX, um, blah blah blah, and it's meant to be in excellent condition. For the most part, I've been very happy with the phones I've bought from them in only fair condition, with one notable exception, but it was still okay. But I'm definitely not complaining about this being in better condition. Now, of course, refurbished tech is a little riskier. You don't know who owned it before, and more to the point, how they treated their tech. So... At least you do get this assessment of grading of the refurbisher to make sure that the condition is as you expect. Also, very importantly, a year's warranty, at least from Backmarket. This is a machine from 2020, so not exactly bleeding edge, but not too old either. It's from Asus's budget gaming range, the tough lineup. But at 389 plus back market's fee, which is just a fiver extra, I think it's got the potential to be a good deal. It has an AMD processor and an NVIDIA graphics card, which we'll go into more detail once it arrives. Incidentally, for that to happen, I've got to buy it. I wonder how fast shipping will be. Now the new one for comparison, what could you buy at the same price if you only want to get brand spanking new? Really only one way to find out. Okay, they've arrived. Whopping massive box this. I don't know what they put in here. I thought I ordered a laptop, not a desktop. Shipping on the notebook and on the back market one was reasonably fast. They both took two business days. Now we open them. Uh, slight problem. My usual filming area is, how do we put this, undersized. Here are both of them. Still having to use a wide angle to show you both. First, this is the new laptop we are comparing to, and to be honest, I don't think you can buy a new laptop with a graphics card, really the defining feature of gaming computers, for under 400, which only left notebook-style laptops. Now, obviously, these have a different intended use, but many of them are still capable of running some games on lower settings, especially newer machines. But will it be able to keep up with our three-year-old gaming laptop? The model is the Honor MagicBook 15, the best notebook I could see for our price, on a deal. So I'm really giving the new category a chance. Wow, this is very slick. Very clean inside too. Well, while it sets up, Alternative Me will open the main act, the back market one. Whoops! Wow, a bit of a chonker. That was to be expected, to be fair. And the power supply, pretty hefty unit, and that's a serious cable. It outputs 20 volts and 7.5 amps, so not a super fast charger. Uh, and this ain't USB-C, unfortunately. The packaging is not quite up to the same standard as the new one, but still perfectly adequate, I think. Now the big boy himself. Now this isn't bubble wrap, this is a weapon. Oh, quite a few scratches, and that one is quite deep. Hmm, not what I would expect from excellent condition. I know plastic scratches easily, but this is quite apparent wear. Hopefully the inside will be better. 
Yes, does look somewhat better. Let's turn it on. It's funny, but this assessment paper they left in with the refurbished laptop, you can see if you look very carefully, there was a B plus grade, which they then increased to A minus, which is a bit ridiculous. I think I'd give this a C. I'm really not impressed with the condition. At least all the scratches are on the outside, but there's no way this should be listed as excellent. Now, aside from that, this guy doesn't really inspire confidence, very plasticky feeling, and he kind of creaks when you pick him up. You won't be able to hear that, but just a bit toyish, really. But some of that is the aesthetic, and that can be put down to it being styled as a gaming computer. And the gaming aesthetic is just a little bit more aggressive, colourful, in your face. And while I favour a slightly sleeker style, it's gaming we're after, not how closely we can copy a MacBook. And already I'm thinking that there may be some fairly big advantages to this design when it comes to ergonomics for gaming, which we'll get to in just a sec. But first, to highlight what you are getting and giving up when you go refurbished rather than new, here are the numbers on paper. It's got a 15-inch display, as does Mr. Polished over here, despite the height differences. But only our Asus does 120 hertz, double the refresh rate of this guy, so should do a smoother looking picture when things start moving. It only has a modest processor by gaming standards, the 3550H by AMD, which should still be perfectly snappy for everyday use. Interestingly, the Honor actually has a slightly faster processor, the 5500U, also by AMD. It should be about 20% faster. Both mobile tier processors, i.e. designed for laptops, capable but not really top of the range. The problem for this guy though is that while he does have the slight advantage in the processor, what he doesn't have is a graphics card. The key advantage of Mr. Chonk over here. Now the graphics card this guy has in him is the GTX 1650 by Nvidia. It wasn't a super high-end card when it was released, but certainly still a capable bit of kit. Whereas the notebook only has integrated graphics, a tiny little bit of the processor dedicated to spitting out the images, so he should still be able to run some of the games, but nowhere near as fast as this guy should, in theory. Nonetheless, there's an age difference between them, so it'll be very interesting to see how the newer processor in here, with its integrated graphics, stacks up against the dedicated graphics card of this slightly older gaming computer. A couple more points of parity, they've each got 8GB of RAM, which is sufficient but not impressive, though very importantly the gaming one can be upgraded. And they've also both got 512GB of solid state storage, enough for quite a few older games or just a handful of more modern ones. Now, in practical terms, actually using him offers quite a dramatically different experience to using the Honor Notebook. The first and most immediately apparent difference is their build quality, as we've already touched on. Look, it's not awful, it's just a little reminiscent of laptops from 10 years ago, and a world apart from the sleek package the Honor brings for the same price. The base is almost bendy feeling, and the screen is almost floppy by comparison, which is strange when you consider how much thicker it is. I guess materials really play a major role. Metal just feels more premium than plastics. The really weird thing though is that this guy, branded as a tough book, claims a military grade toughness standard, which means it can take a knock, kindly demonstrated by the previous owner, even if it gets scratched to shit in the process. Next, the screens. Now, they're both okay, neither is spectacular, neither of them has the best viewing angles, but provided you're sitting head on, they're both fine. The battery, a very important part of a laptop if you're planning on taking it anywhere with you. Now, the Toughbook, despite its extra size and the extra hardware it's got to power, don't forget all of those RGBs. Yeah, there we go. It has a smaller battery. It's ridiculous. 48 watt hours versus 56 watt hours in this slim guy. A little absurd really, but maybe they figure that if it's not going to have good battery life anyway, why even try? And sure enough, it doesn't impress. This guy on the other hand is pretty good. I haven't measured exactly, but this guy just keeps going. Still, he will give you a few hours provided you're not trying to game, but you wouldn't take this guy out for the day with you without bringing the charger along. Which with the size of this thing will add an approximate extra half tonne. And this segues onto the topic of portability. Now, of course, this is one without any competition by the Honor. But I feel it is a little bit of a moot point when it comes to gaming laptops, because nobody for whom 
pocketability, or rather backpackability, backpack, backpackability. <laughs> is the top priority should be buying one of these. Or rather, if they do, they should know that they better hit the gym first. Speakers, surprisingly, went the way of the honour here too. Not something I'd expected given their dimensions. This guy just gets a bit shrill at higher volumes, but this one does rely on downwards facing speakers, which means you need a hard surface if you want the speakers to speak up properly. Finally, keyboards and trackpads, including general ergonomics. The keyboards feel quite different, and this is where the gaming computer starts really earning some points back. RGB! The end! Thanks for watching. Not quite. The key presses are much deeper here, although the keyboard itself is quite spongy and flexes a bit too much throughout, whereas this one just feels cheap and clicky to me. One other thing to note is that this one does have a number pad, which, while it's nice to have, it does shift the keyboard, the letters part of the keyboard, over to the left a bit, which strangely makes it feel a bit more cramped to me. They are the same size. That said, it certainly is better for gaming, having the WASD keys over to the left more. The Honor takes this one easily. It's got a larger trackpad and less rattly. This one feels almost loose, very much in line with the rest of their design language. Now, this is a big one, the ergonomics, and it wasn't something I'd even considered before I got them physically in my hands to compare them, but it turns out to be one of the most noticeable differences between them. Now, the Asus one is deeper closed, which means that the screen is naturally slightly further from you and vertically higher especially when you take the extra thickness of the base into account. I measured from the table and it's about six centimeters versus just over three from the table over here. And you really feel it using them. This one is just so much more head on. I'd say it could be the single most important difference apart from performance, which we are finally going to test now with some games. The processors on both of these are recent AMD chips. The newer machine having, well, the even newer chip. So as expected, performance is good on both of these in everyday tasks. So we're going to do a brief run from some of the lightest games all the way up to some fairly recent ones. Starting at our easiest game, I've chosen MC5 or Modern Combat 5 from Gameloft. If you remember this game, you probably remember it as a mobile game because, well, it is. It was released approaching 10 years ago, so it is able to run on some fairly old hardware. So if either of these guys can't run it, they're going straight back. They must have heard me because they both ran it effortlessly. Next, we'll up it all the way to Minecraft, a classic. Now, I have literally no idea what I'm doing here, which is a little embarrassing because it seems most five-year-olds are able to figure out this game. But here I started to notice that while the notebook runs this, it's not terribly smooth. There are little lag spikes or stutters, which just makes playing it a little bit nauseating. It's okay, and then suddenly it's not for a moment. And then, very strangely, the gaming laptop didn't seem to be doing any better. Possibly worse. The gaming PC should breeze through a game like this. After trying out subsequent games and discovering similarly disturbing results, I figured something's wrong here. Thankfully I got a big hint when after troubleshooting for a while, it started to run low on power. I plugged the power cable in and whee, the FPS shot straight up, doubling immediately. So much smoother. So it turns out there are multiple power profiles. A high one starts immediately when you plug it in, and a bit of googling later I was able to track down the Nvidia control panel for the graphics card to allow it to enter a higher power mode, even only on battery, to try and stop the bloody thing from trying to conserve power by turning itself into a non-gaming laptop. This wasn't 100% effective in all games, but we'll get to that in a moment. So upping it again to CSGO, yes I said CSGO, and this isn't CSGO, because between me down loading the games to test and actually getting around to test. Valve, the developer of Counter-Strike, upgraded the game and so now we're testing on Counter-Strike 2, not Counter-Strike Go, which is a bit more of a challenge for the machines. Well, we'll still see how it goes. Maybe it is a little bit too much for this guy because he was really struggling. You can drop the resolution and make it run a bit better, but obviously that is not without fairly serious compromise. And it still didn't lead to a wonderfully pleasant experience. Here I am again demonstrating a level of gaming ineptitude that should ban me from making videos anything to do with tech. 
but on the gaming laptop, once we fixed the whole power management thing, it ran it very nicely actually. Quite a pleasant experience. Until I was required to do something other than get carried by the bots on my team. Anyway. Lastly, and as the final boss for them, Battlefield 5. The truth is, I didn't actually test these in order. I was trying Battlefield first, and when I started Battlefield 5 on the Honor, and I saw it could run it at all, I thought, oh no, if it can run it at all, it's going to kill all the other games, making the gaming laptop quite an awkward machine to recommend. I mean, you are giving up a lot in build quality, portability, and most of all, battery life. If all you're getting is moderate improvements in more recent games, and the notebook can handle anything older, but having now tried the other games and seeing that this really isn't up to task for anything that isn't very light without serious compromise, and how decent an experience even a game as heavy as Battlefield 5 is on this old gaming laptop, I think there is a larger category of people for whom this machine makes sense. Just realise that while there are very useful advantages in terms of the performance and the ergonomics, it also has some very serious downsides compared to this. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos on refurbished tech. Let's not drop it. That would be a sad end to the video.